Initially, I had moved out because I needed to move closer to the college I was attending. I grew up in a small town that barely had a convenience store, a gas station, and a library. Everything else was at least half an hour away, but the one thing it seemed to lack was a decent college with a credible nursing program. So, rather than having to travel three hours each day between school and home, Father insisted that I move to the city and get a place of my own. When I got the call from the hospital telling me that Father was in intensive care after a stroke, I left work immediately. I drove like a maniac and I pulled up to the hospital, desperate to see for myself that he was alive. He was awake and responsive, but after conversing with the doctors, I was advised to either move back and care for him or move him into a nursing home. They said there was a state-of-the-art nursing home in the same city I was living in and even recommended that I look into it. It wasn't even the fact that I was refusing to quit school and go back home. I had already started to call the school to drop out when Father called me over and, while his voice quivered and his words slurred, he rebuked me for trying to do something so brash and foolish. After insisting that I don't throw my life away and wasting my time on him, he volunteered to go to the nursing home the doctor recommended and asked me to handle everything. That's what I had been in the middle of doing when Jenna, an old friend of mine from high school, called and said that her brother had been asking about me and wanted to meet up when they visited the city that same day. I initially tried to turn her down, especially since I had only seen him briefly at our high school graduation, but she insisted on me giving him a chance. So, after agreeing to meet him for lunch at my favorite diner, Jenna hung up the phone, and I started to plan around the inconvenient date. I was uncomfortable dating, especially since everyone always seemed to dislike me. I was considered plain and ordinary, but I wasn't ugly. I was short and thin, and my breasts were larger than most. However, since I preferred not to waste my time on fancy clothing or makeup, I was always wearing the plainest of clothing that hid the curves of my body. My long blonde hair was luscious and matched my emerald eyes, but my plain appearance seemed to cancel out my natural beauty. The waitress finally returned, carrying my order as she approached the table. She placed the plate of food down with a practiced hand, and the glass of Dr. Pepper followed behind it. As soon as everything was on the table, she offered me the bill and disappeared into the kitchen once more, confirming that I may very well always be alone. The food lost all flavor as depression set in, and the joy I always felt when I visited this place fled me as I went through the meaningless task of eating. Every bite grew heavy and threatened to suffocate me while I tried not to choke. Finally, the food was gone, and I paid my bill and left the diner just as my phone started to ring. Hello? I asked, wondering if it was the workers I had hired to help me move everything, or father, who was always wanting anything but the mushy food they served at his new home. Instead, it was Jenna. Hey, so I hate to say it, but Kyle canceled on you, she told me. His ex got in contact with him, and they're going to get back together. My mind was numb as I made my way over to the car. I'm not worried about it, I reassured her climbing into the front seat of the car. I was about to call you anyway. I wasn't going to be able to make it anyways. She went silent for a moment, but she sounded a bit happier when she finally responded. Well, that's okay, she reassured me, ignoring the blank tone behind my words. Anyways, I have a friend who lives in the city who's looking for a date. Do you want me to set you up? I groaned as I shook my head. I don't know, I said, feeling uncertain as I spoke. I think I would rather get my stuff done rather than go on another blind date. She grew insistent as she spoke. Nonsense, she protested. You'll love him. Trust me. 